The BBC has gained access to secret files which contain new clues as to how four people were wrongly convicted of the Guildford pub bombings in the 1970s. Jerry Conlon, along with his co-defendants, served 15 years in jail before the convictions were finally quashed. Emma Vardy has more. In October 1974, bombs ripped through two Guildford pubs. Five people were killed and many more injured. Police were under huge pressure to apprehend the IRA bombers responsible for these Surrey attacks. The police and the army came in and kicked the door in. Anne McKiernan was 14 when her brother, Jerry Conlon, was arrested in Belfast. We were an ordinary Catholic family growing up on the Falls Road in a working class area. You know, my family weren't Republicans. There was no way that Jerry Connolly was involved in any bombings because Jerry Connolly wasn't in the IRA. The accused were brought to court from police stations where they'd been. But the Guildford Four were found guilty Monday. and sentenced to life in prison. Charged as a result of Surrey Police investigation. They served 15 years. In 1989, their moment of redemption came. The Court of Appeal overturned their convictions and Jerry Conlon walked free. 15 years for something I didn't do, for something I didn't know anything about. The case shattered confidence in the British legal system. The Guildford Four claimed they'd been set up by corrupt police. An inquiry into the wrongful convictions was carried out by a High Court judge, Sir John May. But more than 700 files from Sir John May's findings remained private, embargoed by the government. Now, a freedom of information request by the BBC has succeeded in securing the public release of six files. For the first time, they show some members of the inquiry refused to accept that Jerry Conlon had not been a member of the IRA, even after his release. Jerry was burning up and said that he never got sight of those files. He was burnt. To him, it was an injustice piled on top of a whole heap. Of, of other injustices. The papers refer to police intelligence from the time of the arrests, which was never tested in court. They give us an indication that some of the problems that we had uh, in the course of the case over many years, the persistent attempt to try and reconvict the Guildford Four was still going on. I would like to see everything that Sir John May saw, all the evidence that was given to him, all the documents that were produced to him, so that we can see what it was that uh, um, he was able to find out about the case and why it went so badly wrong, why four young people were convicted of terrible offences and served an enormous period of time in prison. Being cleared was never enough. He wanted a public apology for all those convicted. Are you feeling nervous? Get out, get out. I'm very sorry that they were subject to such an ordeal and such an injustice. In 2005, That's the then Prime it. Minister, Tony it's Blair, issued an apology to the Guilford Four for the miscarriage of justice. And publicly exonerated. Tremendous relief. It was almost like a millstone had been taken from around my neck. Jerry Conlon died two years ago, aged 60. Richard O'Raw, a former spokesperson for the IRA and biographer and friend of Jerry Conlon, says there are now renewed calls for all 700 files to be placed into the public domain. Why does this still matter? It still matters because it was such a huge injustice. It matters to Anne Conlon, Jerry's sister, and it matters to an awful lot of other people. The truth matters. It has to matter, because if it doesn't matter, we live in a, uh, in a society that is ruled by anarchy. You know, what the British government has done, they have destroyed my family 42 years later and still not getting answers.